Hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing well. I uh, woke up about an hour and a half ago, so my voice is still a little bit rough. But anyways, I thought it was about time to shave, which you can't probably tell that well, because I have, I have blonde hair, but anyways, it is about time to shave. And it gave me the idea that why not do a video about a great... Uh, barbershop fragrance um, now what is a barbershop fragrance or type of a this it's a type of a scent that I associate with that um, barbershop environment with shaving and feeling fresh refreshed and sensual warm after a shave type of a scent that has um, aromatic yet uh, fresh and uh, elegant, refined, warm notes that um, balsamic stuff like that. So first off, let me show you. Um, let me explain you what I'm about to do with this list. These are five fragrances that I uh, think are very well suited for this type of occasion shaving. So. Um, I wanted to pick the best fragrance out of the five that I'm about to show you, but I couldn't. Instead, I chose two ultimate barbershop type of fragrances. And I have three um, honorable mentions, you could say, or three alternatives, which are also suiting this theme in a way, uh, at least for me personally, um, but they aren't exactly what a barbershop is supposed to smell like they just um, they just uh, feel right wearing after a shave now let me also say that these five will all be designer fragrances so you won't have to spend a lot of money on it okay you won't be ruined if you're looking for one of these in the shops so first off let me show you what two fragrances I picked out to be the winners in this list if there are uh, if there is supposed to be a winner um, these two are the winner okay first off um, it will be no surprise if I show you this bottle um, it's by uh, Azaru and uh, this is uh, the original Azaru Purum and uh, I believe I have an older formulation of this juice which is very strong and lasts a whole day um, so if you are looking for uh, Azaru Purom then make sure you get um, a bottle with the silver, uh, the silver cap and also you want to have the logo in form of sticker it shouldn't be uh, just embossed in the glass which is probably the latest formulation and that one is weak so Azago for fuck's sakes fix it already okay you you let you let people pay the same price than before the juice is not the same anymore it's really weak it's not in terms of um, uh, personal impressions everybody's uh, agreeing on this the latest formulation is crap fix it this one is beautiful it's absolutely a masterpiece I, I can't stress enough how refined and elegant this juice is it's really um, yeah it's it's just amazing you have lovely notes of uh, of course the oak moss you have lavender you have leather you have a bit of uh, lemon you have amber this is a very very complex fragrance but it, it, it is just done right okay now next stop the one that I couldn't um, the, the, the other fragrance that I, I couldn't pick out um, which is considered to be a um, little twin brother of Azaru Purom it gets compared uh, quite a few times before quite a few times before is by the house of Yves Saint Laurent and uh, this is called Rive Gauche and I have the Eau de Toilette Intense so this is also an older type of bottle the new ones are, are square bottles with the, the wooden top um, 
but yeah this is the eau de toilette intense and it is uh, a, a little bit different to the original Rive, Rive Gauche but um, it's still pretty close and it still resembles the uh, barbershop type of fragrance that I would uh, wear after a shave so um, Rive Gauche is uh, also very warm, very sensual, very refreshing but um, it, it, there are some major differences in the notes this one is more about uh, it, it's a little more sharp and a little less earthy in a way than the Azzaro now um, it, while the Azzaro has um, lavender which is a soft gentle warm uh, note I would say this is um, probably a little more earthy due to the oak moss and also uh, the notes like uh, leather and amber. They they, they really um, e I would say even make it a little a little dusty in a way if that makes sense. So it, it's a little less sparkling and a little less sharp as uh, Rive Gauche because this fragrance opens up with a lovely star anise note and um, you can really tell it, it, it's in the same league but yeah it's just a little a more uh, aromatic a little more uh, sharp in a way a little more sparkling than um, Azzaro Pumon this one is a little more uh, well well uh, mannered it's a little a uh, little softer and um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say softer because they're both really strong but it's a little more refined than um, than Rive Gauche. Rive, Rive Gauche is, 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 is truly a ballsy, uh, fresh, aromatic um, type of a scent that really fits a self-confident um, man maybe with a leather jacket about to uh, about to go and score today and uh, just make the best of it. So these two are um, what I would say the, the ultimate um, barbershop fragrance in my collection. And um, and I just I couldn't pick uh, a winner because I like them equally. Um, like I said, this is a little more spicy to me because of that star anise, while this has just regular anise and uh, more lavender and uh, that amber, that, that leather that little tones it more down in a way. The scent itself is uh, it's virtually in the same league, but um, there, are, there are differences. Great scents, uh, pick them up if you can. And if you're looking in, uh, into getting a barbership type of scent. So, next I have uh, three fragrances that aren't really balsamic or um, that don't really have the same kind of notes um, in them. But when you wear them, you kind of feel uh, refreshed yet. Uh, masculine and warm in, a, in a, the same way that the other two fragrances do. They have that classical um, manly vibe. Um, well, two of them have and one isn't. But first off, let me show you my, um, my third pick for this type of fragrance. And it is by the house of Christian Dior, and um, it's a flanker of Eau Sauvage. It's also an eau de toilette a concentration, um, but this is called Fresher Queer. And I believe it was launched in 2008. And this fragrance is uh, basically nothing like the original uh, Eau Sauvage. It has a beautiful leathery note in the heart and dry down of the fragrance. Um, still has that freshness, that 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 um, old school kind of a vibe of the original uh, Eau Sauvage, but it has that leather to accompany it, and that's that's really uh, interesting because it 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 kind of makes a fresh type of a scent really warm at the same time too. So a beautiful a beautiful creation. It's sad to see it's been uh, discontinued. 
but um yeah anyways uh, a great pick for this uh, this occasion okay um, another fragrance that really fits the uh, old school type of a, a type of a scent um, is uh, by the house of uh, Chanel called Pour Monsieur. Now this is also a fragrance that's been around a couple of decades, came out in the 60s I believe. Um, also very refreshing but also uh, in the same league of Eau Sauvage yet this one is more about fresh notes. It lacks leather or anything really warm. Um, it, it's more about um, lemony notes, lemon verbena, it has vetiver in it. It's, it's truly beautiful stuff. This is the, the regular uh, Pour Monsieur. It lasts uh, a couple of hours, a good couple of hours. It's not a monster in any way, but this is, uh, for the time it lasts, I really enjoy it. I feel refreshed, I feel uh, masculine, and this is also something that I would suggest wearing after a shave, okay? And of course we have one left and this I wouldn't consider to be the ultimate masculine fragrance um, because it, it's it's kind of it's kind of a little too gently in a way it's really friendly it's really um, I would even say this is kind of unisex um, for people who are just about getting into fragrances they might even consider this to be a little feminine but uh, after sniffed out so many fragrances I think this is really unisex and, and even still uh, leaning a little bit towards the masculine side. This fragrance is not exactly um, a barbershop type of a scent, but it's considered to be a soapy uh, fragrance. People say this would um, represent how you are supposed to smell after washing yourself with a luxury soap. So, um, without further ado, let me present you my ultimate soapy fragrance, Prada uh, Amber Pour um, or Prada Man, and um, just look at that bottle, beautiful classy stuff right there, it has the ingredients listed on top, labdanum, um, patchouli, uh, saffron, those are, those are notes really present in this composition. So, um, like I said, um, Prada Amber Purum uh, is, 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 is all about feeling refreshed and uh, clean, but still it has warm uh, notes of patchouli, saf the saffron to give it that little kick, that little, little spicy kick. Um, I also believe there's, uh, there's, of course, amber in here, maybe some vanilla, um, beautiful stuff. It's been a while since I wore it. But I remember to feel really, um, really refreshed and really elegant um, by this fragrance. Um, so there you have it, guys. Um, these five are all excellent picks for uh, the theme of shaving and feeling spectacular afterwards. If you have any comments on this video, please let me know uh, what you think. Um, what you wear in, in, in this type of occasion and um, as usual thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed see you on the next video bye